Welcome back, Irish fans, to Breaking Down Breeze West podcast. Today we got a Virginia Tech game preview. Uh, getting to the time where Notre Dame really has to start making a run. Two-game win streak, got to capitalize on that momentum. And it's going to be tough playing a ranked team tomorrow night. Jake and I are here. Uh, it's just me for now, but I'm going to get Jake on in a couple minutes. So let me start it off. Just some info on Virginia Tech, 9-2, and two, ranked 20th in the country in the new rankings that came out today. Uh, but they are coming off of a big loss on Saturday against uh, Syracuse. I mean, that's a game I thought they would have won, and they lost by, I'm pretty sure, 10-plus. Forgot to look for that score, but I remember uh, it wasn't a great game for them. It wasn't a great showing, but they're still a really good team. I think Notre Dame times them up kind of perfectly, though. Tyrese Radford, pretty much their best player, it just came out that he got a DUI, um, and he's suspended. I'm not exactly sure if he's suspended for Notre Dame, but I assume he's not going to play tomorrow night. So that's a huge loss for them. If you want to hear more in depth about kind of what he means to them and their team in general, check out our first Virginia Tech preview. We had Mike McAllister on, uh, covers Virginia Tech for, I think, Locked On Podcast Network. So go check out that preview uh, if you want to know more about them. But this one we're going to kind of focus on Notre Dame a little more and kind of get to the point rather than going over the other team a lot. So uh, that's what I have for them. They're, they're a team that's better than Notre Dame, <laughs> put it simply. We talked about that in the first preview, but, I mean, they just are. So uh, I'm going to go with the keys now. I mean, keep up the offensive flow they've had the last two games. Uh, it was actually pretty impressive how Hub and Ryan controlled the offense against Miami. Hub did have seven points or turnovers, but he was really efficient from the field. Uh, shot selection was really good, and Miami has some big athletic guards, so um, that's good that he could really do that. But against Virginia Tech last time, he had a ton of turnovers. Him and Ryan were both really inefficient, so keep up the offensive flow. And then secondly, I'm going to say rebound. Notre Dame got out-rebounded. 41 to 24 in the first game and gave up 16 offensive rebounds. Brutal. I think Notre Dame would have been in this game more if they could get the rebounds like that. But Aluma and Mutz really killed them down low. So that's something they're really going to have to improve on this game if they want any chance. I mean, Virginia was settling for bad shots and then Mutz would get a board or Aluma would get a board. And uh, second chances are never good. We saw in Miami that Notre Dame did a little bit better on the boards and they were able to kind of limit what Miami could do. And then three, shoot the lights out. I mean, like I said before, Virginia's just a better team than Notre Dame is. Uh, probably have the athletic advantage, better down low. So shooting the lights out is kind of your only hope, and they didn't do that the first game. Wirtz had three points. Goodwin was the only efficient guard we had that game. So really going to need that. Another things to watch for before I bring on Jake. Starters. Uh, we saw the blue team come out. I, for one, am on board with the blue team always. So let's get the blue team back out there undefeated. Uh, so that would be interesting. But this is a huge game. I don't think Bray's going to do that. But uh, he said it all depended on practice these next two days. So if they had a good practice today, then you never know. So <clears throat> that's what I have for kind of Notre Dame. And then how Virginia Tech comes out with Rad without Radford is something big. Uh, I'm pretty sure they knew about his DUI before Saturday, and they kind of came out flat a little bit, I'm pretty sure. I wasn't able to watch that game as much, but um, it definitely takes a toll, and now it's public news, so we'll see how that goes. And then if Jalen Cohn gets going, Notre Dame's in trouble. That's something else to look for. He had 18 points against Notre Dame on 5 of 12 shooting. Hit some really, like, impossible shots <laughs> against us, so if he could, if he's uh, on his game, then we're going to have a really tough time. And then lastly, we already talked about this a little bit, the Prentice and uh, Cormac have good games. Wasita Bide, or Wabisa Bide, his name's, <laughs> name's tricky, and they're a team that we don't see too often, so he's a tough name. But uh, one of the best defensive guards in the ACC really annoyed Prentice all game last time, so – He's somebody that I'm a bit concerned about, but if Prentice and Cormac can kind of get it going on him, then we're in good shape. So 
that's all I have to kind of go over. I'm going to bring on Jake now, and we'll talk about Notre Dame's win streak and the game a little bit more. All right, so now I got Jake on. Uh, we went over Virginia Tech a little bit before Jake came on, but now he's back. So it's first podcast in like a week or two because uh, they didn't play. But I guess let's go to Jake. We haven't heard from him since before Boston College. So thoughts on Notre Dame's two-game win streak? Uh, are you taking anything from it, or do you think it's just they were playing kind of crappy teams? Um, well, I can probably comment more on Boston College. Uh, so from what I saw from that game, um, I really lo- loved how the offense flowed. Um, I can't remember, did Boston College really even make a run back into it? Or, I mean, it didn't really seem close to me most of the game. Yeah. How the know. offense flowed, I loved how Hub played. I loved how, you know, I don't, have, I don't have the exact stats in front of me, but, you know, the offense played great. I mean, the defense is never going to be spectacular, but it did its job. I mean. You know, I think mostly it was really good, good from that game, especially with how the, um, you know, as I said, you, you need – I know Hub said he played differently and he felt like a, a switch went on for him. And, you know, as you see here, Goodwin just went off. I mean, he – 21 points, 8 of 14, 5 of 19 from the – from three. Um, you know, Nate did his thing. As for Miami, um, I think I probably share in a lot of fan base in that we were also watching the uh, – AFC championship game, was it? Yeah. So, or no, it would have been the NFC championship. No, the AFC championship yeah, game. Yeah. Both, actually. But, you know, I did catch – I'd probably say I caught about half of it. I was switching back between commercials, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I think they did well. I mean, Miami made a bit of a run back into it. That was a little annoying. Um, but, you know, it was good. I mean, wh- what did you think of the, the starting lineup, for instance? Uh, I'm, I talked about this when you were off, but I'm fully aboard the uh, blue team train. I mean, undefeated, right? So I think – I don't know that we necessarily trot them out against a ranked team, but it was definitely a nice change of pace. It was kind of fun. And uh, I think it kind of sent a message to the starters that you guys aren't untouchable. Do you think anything about it, or do you think it was just kind of oh, – yeah. I think it also gives a boost to those guys. You know, Cormac starting a lot. Jogo has started – I think, what is that, his second start now? And yeah, he's the second. So, you know, all right. But to Morgan, uh, Zona, and Sanders, um, you know, I think it shows that, you know, hey, we can put you in for minutes that matter. We can start you in ACC games that matter. When we're trying to turn the season around and you get the start. You know, I know they didn't play after they came out, but, you know, that's, that's you know, I can't imagine that hurts for them. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they're, they're still a ways away from being – good ACC players, but, you know, one day it could happen. For sure. Also, a uh, note, not about the game, but we got to stop. We got to get – whoever's scheduling these t- game times, we got to we gotta stop scheduling games in the middle of big NFL and college football games. So, like, this is, this is like the fourth game that's been in, during a massive football game. So, we, And one of them was Notre Dame football. <laughs> yeah, exactly, against Clemson. That was the Purdue one, right? I mean, okay, we, how many Notre Dame fans? How many Notre Dame fans were watching the second half of that one? Probably, probably you have you. two televisions you watching it. Yeah, it's brutal. I I barely. Well, I was watching Miami, but I mean, I have I had a second screen, so. But uh, I'll just talk about that one a little bit, uh, since a lot of the fan base didn't even catch that game. I thought Notre Dame's offense flowed probably equally as well as it did against Boston College. We talked about going into the game uh, with our Miami guy that Notre, or Miami hasn't really beaten the zone all year, and Braids took full advantage of it pretty much all game. We saw 2-3, 1-3-1, switching up and back for a lot of the game, but really made it hard on Isaiah Wong and Cam Augusti to get to the basket. Cam Augusti also was uh, not 100%. I think he was, like, sort of questionable for this game, and he was on somewhat of a minutes restriction. So that was interesting. Miami's also really depleted, though. No Chris Likes, no Walker. Uh, just I think I think that team that Miami trotted out may be worse than that Boston College team we played. So I can't take too much from that. But it, anytime you can slow down Isaiah Wong and uh, what's it, Cam Augusti, then you're in pretty good shape. So. 
that's kind of what I have for that one. Anything else on Notre Dame's two-game win streak before we move on to Virginia Tech? I hope it's – well, I guess this plays into that. I hope this is a turning point for the rest of the season. I know we were 2-5 and five in, the, in the league last season, and we finished with a winning record. I think that would go a bit longer in this season to, uh, you know, finish with that, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, on to Virginia Tech. And uh, did you see uh, the – not Notre Dame-related news, but what happened with uh, their team? Yeah, Tyrese Radford with the DUI. I remember – I was talking about that a little bit. I'm sure they knew Saturday when they played Syracuse, but that's uh, – a or maybe they didn't know because didn't that happen Sunday? Was he was he playing against Syracuse? I don't think he played against Syracuse. They said there was a – I saw the guy who we talked to, Mike McAllister, for last Virginia Tech game. We were talking about – uh him a, lot, a little bit and he said they were that he was their best player so that's something big to note but uh he reported that DUI I think it was on Sunday morning or yesterday morning let me look at their schedule and see if he if he played but if uh if this is the first game since then they could definitely uh they could definitely come out flat you agree with that yeah, I mean, I think, you know, he's their second-best player, I would probably say. Um, you say Aluma's better? Yeah, I, th- I think that's a guy who you'll see on an all-ACC team for sure. Um, mm-hmm. You know, maybe we've seen Radford or Cone, but, you know, uh, you know, it's a big blow. Um, but I, I, just, I still have to see it to believe it with this team beating, a, a, you know, a ranked team. For sure. Uh, Radford did play against Syracuse, so I guess it happened. I think it happened Saturday night. I guess maybe Sunday morning. So this that could definitely be something to monitor with them. I mean, when your second best player, some people think it's your best player, uh, gets arrested like two days before a game, that's definitely something that could change uh, the way you go into a game. So that's something to monitor for sure. Any thoughts on the last Notre Dame game? Uh, against Virginia Tech and anything you kind of notice? Yeah, obviously they got off to a great start and they really didn't continue it. That's been a problem. But I guess it's not been as much the last two games, so got to hope for more of that. For sure. I think you catch Virginia Tech at the perfect time. Uh, so that that's something to sure. know. Also, Jalen Cohn came off. He shot one for nine from the field with three points on Saturday. So let's hope that continues because – I was talking about it a little bit earlier, but he he hit like every shot he took. It felt like against Notre Dame. So hopefully that continues. But uh, the last couple of things I have, who do you think the leading scorer will be in this game? I'm going because they play smaller, really. So yeah, I agree. Nate was their leading scorer the first time, I'm pretty sure. And Virginia Tech might have the best on-ball defender guarding hub and Ryan had a bad game against them last time too. So going to go with Nate. And then before I let you go, we made this one kind of quick, but uh, you have a prediction for this one. I'm going to Notre Dame by a score of 73 to 69. That's a uh, interesting, it's a little, a little out there. I'm, I'm down for that though. Was it because of Radford? Is that why you picked Yeah, up? that would be why. I think, you know, they're maybe they're a bit shaken. They lost to Syracuse. They lost their second-best player. You know, I, th- I think that happens. Yeah, I think if we're going to beat a ranked team, it was going to be that first Virginia game or Ohio State. But this one, I think, I think you come into it about as good as you did any of those games. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Virginia Tech by around five. I just can't – I can't bet for Notre Dame – against the ranked team. I mean, they haven't shown it. I'm sure uh, – I'm sh- well, you've said that a couple times too. So, But I don't even know if this Virginia te- Tech team deserves to be ranked. I think it's just that there weren't other teams that they could have put in over them. So that's kind of my thoughts on them. But I just don't think Notre Dame's going to do a great job handling their backcourt of B-Day. And probably Cone's going to get extended minutes too without Radford. But that's all I have. Uh, I think we can both kind of see where the other one's coming from on the predictions, but hopefully they can pull it off. And hopefully Jake's been better with predictions this year. So hopefully uh, his record will go up. So 
any of those closing thoughts, Jake? Or Hoping for a good game. For sure. Uh, hopefully we'll be back previewing Pitt after a Notre Dame win and three-game win streak. So thank you guys for watching. Go Irish.